Oh. <laughs> it's so good. I'm Mark Matsumoto and welcome to my Tokyo kitchen. Eight years ago, I showed you how to turn a skein of salmon roe or sujiko into ikura. I've made a few changes to my recipe since then that takes us to the next level by harnessing the power of sake. The flavor is more delicate than my original recipe and it really highlights the plump pearls of ikura while bursting with loads of umami. So let's have a look at our ingredients. The first thing you're going to need is sujiko or whole skeins of salmon or trout roe. These are mature but unlaid eggs that are contained in a matrix of connective tissue. When you're buying salmon roe, you want to look for skeins with large plump eggs that haven't been frozen or you may run into problems with the eggs popping. To cure the ikura, I'm going to make a brine using 3 quarters of a cup of sake, 1 tablespoon of my dashi shoyu which I'll link to in the description, 2 teaspoons of sugar, and 1 and a half teaspoons of salt. To make the brine, just add the sake, soy sauce, sugar, and salt to a pot and bring the mixture to a rolling boil. You want to cook the brine until it no longer smells like alcohol and this will take about 2 minutes. You can check it by wafting the vapors towards your nose like this. Once all of the alcohol has evaporated, you want to cool the brine down to room temperature. To speed this up, you can submerge the bottom of the pot in a bowl of cold water like this. While we wait for that to cool, I want to take a moment to thank all of you who've signed up for my weekly recipes over at MarksRecipes.com. I've got a bunch of other easy original recipes over there like my kimchi cured salmon or my Torotaku tuna belly salad and your membership helps to support this channel. So if you're not already a member, I hope you'll consider checking it out. All right, let's work on our salmon row. To separate the salmon eggs from the skein, I like using a wire mesh grill or cooking rack like this. Just set it over a bowl, and then I'm gonna split the skein of row open like this using my fingers. Now I'm gonna flip it over so the split side is facing the grate, and then I'm going to gently rub the sack of roe against the wires which will coax each salmon egg out of the skein, almost like you're grating cheese. The key here is to not press too hard or you're going to pop the eggs and tear bits of the skein off with your ikura. You could keep going like this until you get all of the eggs out of the skein, but it starts getting slippery and difficult to handle, so at this point I like to switch tactics. Just grab a pair of disposable chopsticks like this and sandwich the skein of salmon roe in the middle between the chopsticks. Now you can roll it up while using your fingers to apply pressure against the chopsticks. Keep twisting and you'll start to see the eggs pop out of the skein. Continue squeezing and twisting and you should end up with almost all of the roe in the bowl and the roe sack wrapped around the chopsticks like this. Now we need to clean the salmon row. Just comb your fingers through the ikura and look for eggs that are still stuck together. Then you can pull them apart, removing any bits of membrane still stuck to them. Okay, this is looking good, so let's wash the ikura in cold water. You'll notice the water turns milky and this is all of the blood and protein from the salmon coagulating so give it a few rinses and pick out any popped row or bits of skein that you missed. Once the water runs clear, you want to drain the ikura in a non-reactive strainer like this one made from stainless steel. You need to avoid using metals like aluminum, silver, or steel because the row will cause it to oxidize, giving your ikura a metallic taste. I see a few more popped eggs, so I'm going to remove them now. Let's transfer this to a glass container and then I'm going to pour our chilled brine over the salmon eggs. Stir this together to ensure the brine's evenly distributed and then I'm going to cover this up with a lid and pop it into the fridge for at least 12 hours to cure. 
Okay, it's been about a day, so let's see how our Ikura is doing. As you can see, the row is plumped up, absorbing some of the brine, and the glistening pearls have taken on a vivid orange hue. Now you want to drain off the excess brine. Once you've drained off the brine from the Ikura, you can put it back into the container and store it in the fridge for up to three days, or you can freeze it. Don't let the Ikura soak in the brine for more than a day, or the skin on each egg will get tough. Ikura can be served like caviar, but my favorite way of having it is as a donburi scooped over a piping hot bowl of rice. I'm gonna garnish this with a green shiso leaf, and our Ikura don is ready to eat. So I've been waiting a day for this, so let's dig in. Itadakimasu! Alright, I'm gonna go for just the Ikura first. <laughs> That's the epitome of luxury. The little pearls of ikura burst in your mouth into this flavorful, rich pool of umami. And because we've cured it in a brine, it's not super salty. All right, I'm going to go in for the ikura with the rice. This is the main attraction. Oh, look at that. Get a lot of ikura on there. <laughs> for a Japanese person, this is heaven in a bowl. The sweetness of the rice is the perfect complement to that salty and savory ikura. And you've got that slightly sticky, chewy texture of the Japanese short grain rice contrasting with the slick pearls of ikura that just burst in your mouth. I know uncured salmon roe might not be the easiest thing to find, but fall was the season for it, and I hope you're able to give this a try. Well, I'm going to go cure some more salmon roe to last us through winter, but check out this playlist for everything that you need to know to make restaurant-quality sushi at home, and I'll catch you in the next one.